G'day listeners and welcome back to today's episode of the Keeper League podcast. With our AFL fantasy podcast that doesn't talk about the superstars, we only talk about the lesser knowns and the players that are going to bring value to your draft and Keeper League teams. Uh, my name's Hef and today I am joined by the president of the George Holland Smith fan club. Uh, he's also on the Draft Doctors podcast. Welcome to the show, Cam McLaughlin. Hey, Hef, that is the right order to introduce me, by by the way. G- GHS Fan Club, we hit our highest membership this year. What, one? One. Yeah. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Equal highest. So it's funny uh, that you know, finally forked out and paid up for a membership. It's true. Yeah. Uh, and to be honest, I'll claim it back on tax anyway. <laughs> so, um, man, I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> I've got to tell you that you're in the top three Hollywood adjacent studio experiences here. Well, you're liking the setup, are you? Warner Brothers, Universal, and Studio F. Yeah, it's up Excellent. there. It's up there it's at the very, moment. Very, very good. You've got the um, the view that the listeners don't see where you can actually see the walls above the, the photographs, the posts on the walls where you can actually see the acoustic baffling and stuff uh, to actually make it sound good. It sounds... Chef's kiss. <laughs> let's let's we'll get, get into it. And what are, what are we doing today? Bad. We're talking about the Geelong. We're not just talking uh, FIFA Ultimate Team, which you and I have uh, become oh, obsessed with over the last three or four months. Um, we're talking about this, Geelong. This pod is holding me up from uh, playing with 95 Pele uh, <laughs> Cam. So let's, well, let's go. <laughs> well, it's funny because this will be in the future, but tomorrow, which is when this podcast uh, comes out, has already happened. I will have unpacked at least like five team of the year players. Oh, now, yes. So, yeah. At least. At least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So stay, uh, watch my stream replay because uh, this is coming out on Monday to see how many players I pack. I bet you I won't get one. But anyway, uh, Geelong. The Premiers, all right? So, where, obviously, you had a pretty good year, but fantasy-wise, what was your take on their year? Uh, middling, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, really. A couple of surprise packets in there with um, Blixarves just playing bulk midfield minutes. Probably yeah. couldn't have seen that coming and He hasn't done it since he was their primary ruck where he'd sort of play that ruck midfielder role. And he, I think that year he averaged 101 or something yeah. uh, ridiculous. So, it was good to see him back up the top there. Um but yeah, otherwise it was, you know, the ceiling players. So guys like Guthrie all came back and there was probably a higher distribution across the team. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you look at averages in terms of fantasy overall, they're pretty low for such a, you know, a dominant team, which is quite unusual to see, which just kind of goes to show the fact that the way that you play as a team, um, the way you can rotate like midfielders through, wingers through, rucks through, like it doesn't really matter who they are, defenders through. Yeah. Um, they all play their role, play it well, wins your footy games, but doesn't also always win your fantasy games, that's all. That's um, for sure. Yeah, so we'll get into the show. Um, this year we're doing things a little bit differently just to explain the premise. We've got undervalued players, which are players that um, probably will score better this season than their average suggests, or uh, maybe we're injured or something like that. They come down the rankings a little bit. Uh, breakout contenders, which are guys that kind of fit the mould to go 80 plus this year if everything goes their way. And then stash options, which are guys we don't think are going to have an impact in the immediate future, but might be good down the track. So the first one we're going to talk about right now is uh, Tom Atkins. So he had a great year, like moved into the midfield, right, Cam? Yeah, he did. I think it was round seven. Uh, he went in there. Yeah, hundred percent. So, if you factor in, it's kind of funny because you, you look at his scoring, you always think, well, he didn't. He only averaged seventy eight because he was in defence for the first half of the year, um, and then moved into the midfield second half of the year. If you look at the splits, they're actually very similar. So yes, he's got that well. So you can't really kind of claim that as a factor. But I think the midfield role probably continues, and I think just with another year of experience in there, he can easily move that average above eighty. Don't you think? Uh, I. Mm- I'm probably cold on Tom Atkins okay. to, to go higher. So, he, so it was round ten, by the way, not round seven. But yep. he, um, he, he's still going to be their defensive midfielder, yep. and he'll be locked in that role. I think this could be just what he is—an eighty max yeah, yeah, type yeah. guy. I don't expect too much more than eighty, like around the eighty to eighty-five mark. But as a yeah. defender, um, as a defender, you're going to take sure. that for sure. But yeah, uh, just yeah. know going forward he might lose that defensive status and make him, you know, less attractive. That's all. So, and, and he's one of those players, right? So we've got multiple people that have come in, Tanner Braun, Jack Bowes, Oliver Henry. Two of those are probably going to get midfield minutes. And, I, you know, Tom Atkins is a 27-year-old, was mature age recruit. He tackles well, but I, I'm not, you know, he'd be one of the guys that they might 
pull out of there anyway to let the younger guys have a run. Yeah, well, we'll kind of get into the the midfield kind of rotations and stuff as we get onto the shows. We just cut some players, but there's also a few questions about it uh, at the end. But um, we'll move on to another one that kind of was a, one of your full time midfielders, not so much anymore. But Patrick Dangerfield, his value is at an all time low. Really, do you think he can be relevant again, or what's the go there? Or well, I find it really hard, especially from a keeper perspective. You'd need to be getting him for for free this year, but even still you'd probably get the same type of scoring from a, you know, someone, a breakout candidate that doesn't fully break out. You know, I, I'd prefer to invest in someone like that. From a ceiling perspective, he's going to be pretty restricted from his time on ground. Um, it's just been steadily declining over the last few years. And he's basically just playing as a burst midfielder that's, at the minute. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing him as. The only thing that might tickle my interest a little bit is the fact that he might get forward status at some stage this year. He's basically not going to get kept in our league, I don't think, because the guy who owns him has too many actual good mids to actually yeah. keep him going forward. So he's someone who could be in the pool for us. Do you reckon he's worth kind of taking that punt on to get you like that 75 to perhaps low 80 if everything goes to plan, averaging forward come the position changes? Jeez, I, I, it's not unheard of, right? But they picked up Ollie Henry. The, the forward line's already stacked. So, yeah. and let, you know, Tom Hawkins is obviously injured coming into the season, which could op- open a spot for him. But, you know, last year he was super damaging as just a contested beast in the midfield. Yeah, and just rotating through the bench. There was that one yeah. game in the finals where he just blitzed it up forward, though. So, That's true. Yeah. yeah he, he, but I, I, I don't think it'll be enough okay. to get him DPP. Damn. Because uh, I thought that might be a sneaky good option there. Uh, anyway, uh, next, moving on. Jack Bowes, a lot of talk about this guy. What role do you see him playing this year? So he's training with the midfield, but he's also training with defence. So he's split. They're, they're essentially trying to figure out where they want to deploy him. Yeah. Um, the reason they picked him up is because they like him as a Mitch Duncan type operator. So he can sit inside, he can play outside, and he can also play um, coming out of defence. I think he'll probably shift between defence and midfield every game. Yeah, okay. Could, yeah. Well, that's what we saw last year as well. We saw like people like Zach Tui yeah. going from defense midfield. Your wings kind of rotate a bit. Blitzars yep. would go sit out there and then he'd go defense, <sighs> then he'd go ruck. He'd just play everywhere. So, and the, the awesome games were Blitzars playing as an extra midfielder. They yeah. were exciting times. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we might get... Oh, there's a few questions about that one later on. So we'll get on to Blitzars later because there's a lot of... Actually, no, we'll talk about the rucks now, actually. So... You got Segler in the like, you know, came in late after a year of injury, played a few games, was in your finals team. Stanley has perennially been in and out of the side. Um, and then Blitzarves was your number one for most of the season when injuries were there and form and things like that. Who is your number one rank? Or was it just a rotation again? Rotation again. Yeah. Uh, so I'd suggest Segler. Segler was injured a lot of yeah. last year. So so he missed it. He'd never really got a clear run at it. Um, and then he sort of chopped and changed with Stanley when he did come back in. But I'd say it's a combination of one of those two and Blix. Yeah. So do you think, um, what, yeah. what does that, where does that leave Blix then? Cause he's another player that so many people are like, do I keep him? Don't I keep him? Listed as a ruck this year, which is super handy, but potentially yeah. not playing in the ruck, not playing in the midfield. Could be back in defense. I don't see him going back in defense really. What do you think? So he, he doesn't need to unless yeah. uh, De Koning gets injured. So that's really allowed him to push up the ground and play other roles, which has been fantastic. And I, I reckon his ceiling this year, and given how rucks are this year, is number one ruck. That's how high his ceiling is, right? He, yeah. if he can pump out a 95 plus. That could be the number one ruck. Well, yeah, and I need a ruckman as well, so I might actually try to give him a trade because he's on the nose in our league as well. So I need Ooh. to get that done before Monday. So yep. thank you for reminding yep. me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so yeah, Blix is probably the, the best averaging ruckman out of both out of those three. So we'll go from that. All right, we'll move on to the breakout contenders here. This one's probably no surprise, but we've got Maxi Holmes up the top. He's going to be a gun of the future. Played a lot on the wing last year. Scoring fluctuated a little bit. Uh, got injured for the grand final, unfortunately. Um, but what, does he push inside? Or every Geelong supporter I talk to basically says he's the next inside um, player that we're going to have. But if you look at all the kind of media best 22s and stuff like that, they've still got him sitting on the wing and that sort of stuff. So where does he play and what does he average? So I think he'll average early 80s mm-hmm. for this year. Uh, and I think that's very capable. You know, especially because the year after, he's probably going to take another step up again. Um, but for me, he's, you know, last year, he basically saw a few centre bounce rotations, uh, trailed off towards the end of the year, but it was always one or two a game. I reckon there's a world where that bumps up to about 40 
percent a game this year. Um, so they, there's a world there where it's it's a wing and CBA mix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's good. Let's just um. It's it's kind of I guess it's happening a lot more where you see wingers do push into that inside role. It's probably a bit more uncommon back in the day, but like mm. you know, using the I always use Porter's example because of the team I watch the most closely. But Carl Amon just would play on the wing, then go in the midfield and stuff like that as well. So it does seem to happen um, quite a bit. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he does kind of start that transition to move into an inside midfielder, but continue some of that kind of wing role this year. He, he's already you know they've they've said that he's training as an inside. Yeah. Uh, at the minute, but yeah, for sure. He's there, one of the best runners. So he'll play outside as well. That's perfect. All right, cool. So yeah, definitely one to hang on to if you've got him on your side, um, cause he's going to be a gun of the future, potentially a, a good breakout this year in keeper leagues. I basically class a 80 plus as a breakout because that's when they start to become keepable each yeah. year. So we should see that there. Uh, the next one, Zach Guthrie, um, or the Zote as he's often called by, Zote. um, K's and Doss on this podcast <laughs> when they're on. Can he score more consistently this year? What do you think? Uh, probably not. You know, so uh, I'm a little bit colder on him. Um, Jack Bowes in, I don't think helps him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as it's just an extra person back there. You know, what do you do with someone like Zach Tui? Is he going to be playing as a forward lockdown like he did at parts last year? Or is he going to be in the mid? Or is he going to be in defense? You can't fit them all in there. And what's he now? Like 24, 23? Uh, yeah, 24-ish. I think I'm not really sure. Yeah, like he's okay and he can uh, – I wouldn't be keeping him, to be honest, if um, – it might be a, a big call, but I, I just can't see him developing into a 80-plus defender. He got close last year. So I think it just depends on whether he's in the side consistently and obviously yeah. the role he gets each week. Now, last year that seemed to be the fantasy-friendly role. I think you're right. Bose does um, affect him quite a bit, but it depends where he plays. So if you see Bose still running through the defence, then it might harm him a little bit. But if we see later on in the preseason that he's you know either in the midfield or Bose is another one that could probably roll on a wing as well. So see where he's playing, and that probably answers your Zach Guthrie question. You think that's yeah. fair? Yeah, totally fair. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll move on to the stash options next. Now, Louis became a TikTok sensation, 20,000 views on TikTok for basically saying that Tanner Bruin doesn't get a game at Geelong this year whatsoever. Do you agree with him? Wow. No. <laughs> no, I do not. Okay. Um, What's your take on well, Tanner Bruin? I think I'll just go the complete opposite way and then we can, you know, share the beer if, if it um, – share the – split the difference. But I, I think he plays every game unless he's injured. Okay. To be honest. You're yeah, probably the so, first person who's the first Geelong supporter I've talked to who thinks that. So what's your – my only thinking is you like, you've only got Selwood gone, so you're going to play him as a forward. Who does he replace or what's the go? There's a lot of players in that team that were carried to a premiership, which is probably pretty harsh to say for a premiership player. But you know, guys like Mark O'Connor, he's, he's not that good. Yeah, like he's actually not a good footballer. He plays. So the, he plays roles well. Like he can get tag and do like you know defensive stuff. I don't think they need that though. Like I, yeah, I mean obviously you need defensive like roles to be played, but they've got Tom Atkins in the midfield doing that. For yeah, example. true. I, I just yeah, I really think that Tanner Braun is probably going to push, you know, maybe seventy percent game time. I, I'd suggest. Okay. Won't be probably not super fantasy relevant, like you'd have the DPP, but um, in single season draft, I've actually got him ranked around, you know, Potato Langford, for example, like your mid 70s forward. Fair enough. Yeah, I guess this as a forward does give him a little bit of value. And if he does uh, yeah, go into that midfield a little bit, like he did, um, uh, I guess, at time to time, he was given the opportunity at GWS. It's just that, like, we've seen that he hasn't been starved off of, off of opportunity, just hasn't really delivered on it, that's all. Um, yeah, that's it. So you think he's going to take that next step this year, Cam? Yeah, I, I think so. Okay. Heard it here first, people. I'm mm. probably not agreeing with you there. but uh, That's I okay. I don't love him, but I'm happy to be proven wrong, that's for sure. Uh, all right. Is there anyone that you think I've missed out of here so far? Keeping in mind that we do have a few questions coming up, but anyone you mm. think that I've missed on this document that just needs to be discussed? So I, I think there's a, a bit of a bargain floating around at Geelong yeah. at the minute, and he may or may not be kept in most leagues. People need to reconsider Brandon Parfit. Yeah. They really do. He was poor last year. He was injured in the preseason. He was injured through the year. So it's a little bit of a question on, you know, his body holding up, but there were things like a hand injury, yep. you know, like some of those type of type of things. He's always had a question on his tank, but 
he's going to be free this year. I would yeah, have thought. Absolutely. No one stank on his name and he is probably in the pole position to get Joel Selwood's spot. I agree they, there. Yeah. They're the same player. Yeah. They're basically like in the same type of player. I mean, if you, you have Tom Atkins, but as a defensive runner, half it can be, you know, an explosive stoppage player and excellent in and under. Yeah, no, I do agree there. Um, and he's kind of the reason why I don't have players like Bruin is high or Bose is high because I reckon yeah. he's the one who steps in and kind of stifles those kind of guys um, because he's just he knows the system. He's been there in, in, for a while, and it's just because he was playing with so many champions, um, he was kind of forced out. So, yeah, that is one I do actually like. So I think that's a, a really good addition there. Um, all right, we'll move on to some listener questions in a second, but we'll read out some uh, gold members. So for those who don't know, the gold members support the podcast and keep us going each week and make it possible for us to deliver a show each week. So thank you to uh, Stephen Beverly, uh, Dave Quinlan, Tim McCartney, Tom Oates, Brent Costello, Charles O'Connor, Justin Woodruff, uh, Simon Evans, Andrew Zanka, James Degenhart, and Chris Daniels. So for those who don't know, members get access to all the premium resources on our website. And on Wednesday, we've got our top 100 defender rankings coming out. That's right, Cam. We rank 100 defenders. It's not, the, it's not the most fun job. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, and in, the, in those we factor in uh, basically scoring, obviously, but capability, um, like long-term capability, also likelihood of keeping that position uh, in the future and stuff like that. And we're trying something a little bit different this year, and I'll announce it now because I'm pretty confident it's going to go ahead, is that we're actually going to have a members rank as well. So we've had quite a few members send in their rankings. We've collated them, and then you can see – what I think, uh, hopefully what Kay's thinks. I'm pretty sure he's still doing them. <laughs> and, uh, and then compare them to what our members think as well. So, um, yeah, it should be quite interesting to see some of the differences there and different opinions there. So get on board the membership to get uh, yeah, access can't, to those. Oh, wait, that's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's a lot of work for the members. So big respect to those people because they're awesome. de- dedicated to actually go through and rank 100 defenders. But, uh, yeah, thanks to those guys who have actually uh, done that. So there's a link in the description below if you want to sign up to that. Uh, get on board. There's good stuff there. Um, and there's lots of members out there now. So you're, mm. you're getting behind the pack if you're not part of it. Anyway, uh, listen to questions. Let's get into it. So this one comes from at Dankov24. Who is most likely to play early and regularly out of Bowes, Brune and Henry? I think the first two will play early and regularly. I think Henry, Henry's awesome, but, it, you know, the forward line's stacked already. So it'll be, he, he might struggle to get regular game time. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about Henry, but yeah, I, don't, I definitely Bose, I think, is my pick out of those three for sure. Um, at Grillis 3 more of a single season question, but can you see upside in Cam Guthrie this year? Man, so we, we talked about that distribution point before of AFL Fantasy Points. Geelong were the highest scoring through finals as well, AFL fantasy scoring team in the entire league. Yeah. And they didn't have anyone average over a ton. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's, um, it, I'd suggest there's probably, there is upside for him individually, but it, someone's going to have to lose out. Yeah. Because they're already top of the table for scoring. Cam Guthrie, though, is a player that always, he's not a pretty name. So he always slides, definitely. Yeah. And he usually has a patch where, he can go pretty big and win you a few games. Um, yeah, like it happened in our league. The guy who owned Cam Guthrie went on a tear leading into finals, I think it was, um, because he was putting up good scores each week. But again, that taper off can happen at any time, depending on who they're rolling through that midfield, who's the flavor of the month, who's getting rested, all that sort of stuff there. So there is some value, but I'm just not sure how consistently you can rely on him, that's all. That, that's a, a really good point. The consistency is probably, probably where he'll struggle. I think there was somewhere last year, and just let me double check this quickly, whereby... His game time dropped dramatically. It doesn't surprise me. And that would kind of yeah. Yeah, lead to some of that um, fluctuation in scoring. Yeah. So I think even in his career, he has middled for, yeah, he dropped about 5% time on ground last year, yeah, which probably help. coincides to a drop in scoring. Yeah, like I think he offers value, but I don't think there's upside in him. You're going to get the same at the very best, I think. So, yeah, not sure yep. if there's upside. That's the only thing. Um, at Russ2468, um, will owning a Geelong Ruckman this year be more of a roller coaster than owning a Hawthorne Ruckman? What's your take there? Uh, oofed. I Well, Lloyd Meek isn't a roller coaster. <laughs> Come I'm, on. I'm just a champion for Lloyd Meek <laughs> and also uh, Mark Blixar's. That's a, they're, they're two, nah, Blixar's will probably be a roller coaster, but 
uh, I, I just wouldn't own any of the other two. Yeah, yeah, at least with um, Geelong, you've got a chance of them playing a solo ruck, whereas mm. I think at Hawthorne, you're going to get a meek reeve split and it's going to be gross for fantasy. Hawthorne love two oh, rucks. Yeah. It's just what happens. Mm. So I don't, unless they've ch- overhauled their game plan from last year, uh, same coach, so there's nothing really should change. Um, it's probably going to be one playing forward, one on the ruck and rotating like it has been forever. Well, and interesting now that uh, Mitch Lewis is injured, right? Yeah. So well, someone's going to, yeah, there's a, there could be an opportunity there for me to play bulk ruck time. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, let's move forward. Um, we, I think we talked about this, but uh, Jerry Hello Three asked Brandon Parfit keep or delist. Hard keep, keep, keep if it's um yeah like if you've got if he's like in your later picks I think for sure because there's some upside there. Um, yeah. Michael Bellardi um, asks, will Sam Simpson, my boy, be able to break into the midfield this year? Jeez, that's a that's a tough my boy. I have not hold. thought about this guy for, since that one game where he played in the midfield, essentially. Yeah, and it, he, he's been injured pretty much all last year and played some games in the VFL. When he has Breaking played, to, he's been like more of a forward though, hasn't he? Uh, he's had stints in the mid. He, he kind of did what Tom Atkins was doing last year a little bit towards yeah. the end. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of see him as being great in the midfield in the VFL. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, and I'm not big on him, to be honest. I yeah, don't know what longevity he really has. I feel like if he was going to do something, he would have done something by now. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we talked about this one, but AJS Hawker wants to know Zach Guthrie's role and when do Tui and Stewart retire? Yeah, so something I've been pretty big on this preseason anyway is that Stewart, Stewart's role really changed at the end of the year. Yeah. Last year, so he was a bit more accountable and it lowered his ceiling. He ended up dropping a couple of 60 burgers in the um, you know, penultimate game. So not, yeah. not not super good scoring. And Guthrie's scoring didn't increase there at all. So it was Mitch Duncan who ate a lion's share of it. So for me, I think Guthrie will have a similar role like he did last year uh, and it will be variable. Yeah, matchup dependent. Yep. And uh, Tui will probably retire at the end of this year. And yeah. Stewart's probably got at least three three more to go. Do you see Tui getting much of a run this year? He was kind of in and out last year, wasn't he? No, I, th- I think he played close to maybe close to 22. Maybe I think the might year before injured. he might have been injured. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, if they want to invest in youth, he'd be one of the people to make a little bit away, but he'll be a role player and could be like one of those really good substitute players, you know, now that we've got that new sub role, he could be someone who can play anywhere on the ground and, and can fill a void. No, there you go, Zach Tui played 24 games last year. So there, there you go. Yeah, think, well, he must have missed a couple somewhere, but I think he might have just got injured, so that must have been it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, uh, that's a wrap, basically. So, Cam, mm. anything to plug? Yeah, mate. Uh, so I think the the Draft Doctor's Draft Kit is probably the big one. We are – this is, might be the first time it's been announced. I think we're potentially launching that next week. So this week, I guess when this this drops, you might uh, you might get a after a couple of days. I think you'll have a draft kit in your hands if you want it. Perfectly, uh, perfect. I'll be uh, getting on top of that, and that's perfect timing for our uh, members and listeners as well. So now, nah, good to hear. Um, it's a valuable resource. I use it every year for the for the draft. It's um a bit of a different information to the keeper league, but still quite relevant on where to like you know, especially if I'm pushing for a flag this year. It's kind of a good way to get a kind of guide of how um. Yeah, people are kind of stacking up for this season and what their scoring is going to be like. So, yeah. How did that uh, Essendon review um, turn out in the end, by the way? It's fine. Just the, <laughs> team, the, te- the team review is terrible. The player reviews are really interesting, actually. Okay. I think there's lot, lots of cool stuff there. Well, that's good to hear. All right. Well, get around us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok uh, at Keeper League Pod on all those platforms. Uh, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Slowly getting those YouTube subscribers up, which is good to see. Uh, make sure you get around Manscaped. Uh, use Keeper20 for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, support those people and you support our podcast. So thank you heaps for doing that. And also, speaking of support, please sign up as a member and just keep this podcast going each week. Anyways, thanks, Cam, for coming coming on the show and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> I was like, it's, that's not going to work because yeah. you're only showing one person. Yeah. <laughs> and now I have to edit out that huge awkward silence. Thanks, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it. Keep it. Yeah, maybe. Own the silence. <laughs> Bye.